Imagine spending 286 days floating in space, over 9 months orbiting Earth at 17,500 miles per hour. That's exactly what NASA astronauts Sunita Williams and Butch Wilmore did aboard the International Space Station. Launched on June 5, 2024, aboard Boeing's Starliner for what was supposed to be an eight-day mission, they faced unexpected delays due to thruster malfunctions and helium leaks, stranding them until their triumphant return via SpaceX's Crew-9 capsule on March 18, 2025. But splashing down in the Gulf of Mexico wasn't the end of their journey, it was the beginning of a new challenge. A 45-day rehabilitation program to rebuild their bodies after nearly a year in microgravity. So, what does this process look like? Today, we're diving into every step of their recovery, what NASA has planned, why it's critical, and how it prepares them for life back on Earth. Let's get started. First, let's understand why this rehab is even necessary. Living in microgravity for 286 days takes a serious toll on the human body. Without Earth's gravitational pull, muscles weaken from lack of resistance. Think of it like not hitting the gym for nine months. Bones lose density at a rate of 1 to 2% per month, especially in the hips and spine, making them brittle. The heart, no longer pumping against gravity, shrinks slightly and weakens. Fluid shifts upward, throwing off balance and straining the vestibular system that keeps us steady. For Sunita and Butch, this wasn't a short jaunt. Their extended stay amplifies these effects far beyond the typical six-month ISS mission. When they landed, carried from the capsule on stretchers, a standard procedure, they couldn't walk unaided. Dizziness muscle fatigue, even a weakened immune system, it's all part of the package. This rehab isn't just about getting them back on their feet. It's a scientific gold mine for NASA, refining protocols for future missions to Mars, where crews won't have immediate medical support. Day one kicks off the moment they touch down, after splashing down near Pensacola, Florida on March 18, 2025, they were airlifted to Johnson Space Center in Houston for an initial assessment. Picture this, a team of doctors swarms in, checking heart rates, blood pressure, and muscle tone. Neurological tests come next. Can they stand unassisted? Walk heel to toe without wobbling? Blood work digs deeper, measuring calcium levels depleted by bone loss, immune function compromised by cosmic radiation, and hydration status thrown off by fluid shifts. They're assisted in their first movements, maybe a few shaky steps with support, while sipping high-calorie, nutrient-dense meals to counter the weight they've lost. This isn't a welcome home party. It's the start of a 45-day scientific marathon to rebuild their bodies from the ground up. Week one is all about stabilization. The goal? Get their cardiovascular system steady, reintroduce gravity's pull, and combat that disorienting fog of returning to Earth. Each day, they'll work with physical therapists on gentle stretching and resistance exercises, think elastic bands, not barbells, to wake up those dormant muscles. A tilt table becomes their best friend, slowly shifting them from lying flat to standing upright, retraining blood flow so they don't faint when they stand. Vestibular exercises, head tilts, eye tracking drills, recalibrate their balance, countering the dizziness from a scrambled inner ear. Nutrition ramps up too, a high protein diet packed with calcium and vitamin D kickstarts bone repair, while aggressive hydration restores fluid balance. Doctors monitor their vitals daily asking, how's the dizziness, any fatigue? Sunita, who famously ran a triathlon in space, might find these baby steps humbling, but they're non-negotiable. By weeks two and three, the focus shifts to building strength and mobility. Now they're pushing harder to reverse muscle atrophy and regain coordination. Lightweights or bodyweight exercises, squats, leg presses, target the legs and core, hit hardest by microgravity. 
cardio creeps in stationary biking or slow treadmill walks to boost their weakened hearts. Pool therapy offers a gentler approach, letting them move in water's buoyancy, easing joint stress while rebuilding strength. Advanced assessments dig into progress. MRI scans track bone density recovery in their hips and spine while optional muscle biopsies, tiny samples for science, could reveal how atrophy reverses, feeding data for Mars missions. Psychologically, they're not alone. Counseling sessions help them readjust to Earth life after months of isolation, missing the ISS hum or family time. By week three, they might walk short distances unaided. A small victory like rebooting their Earth software. Weeks four and five ramp up to functional recovery. The goal now is to restore pre-flight fitness and endurance, preparing them for everyday tasks. Workouts intensify, heavier weights and multi-joint moves like deadlifts mimic real-world demands. Aerobia, the aerobic training, jogging or moderate cycling, rebuilds stamina after months of floating. Balance drills get tricky, standing on wobbly surfaces or navigating obstacle courses. To fine-tune coordination, They'll practice climbing stairs, carrying light loads, even testing reflexes and driving simulators. Nutrition shifts to a maintenance phase, balance carbs, proteins, and fats as their metabolism stabilizes. Health checks deepen. Vision tests look for space-induced eye changes like optic nerve swelling, while bone density scans track progress, though full recovery could take months beyond this program. Butch, a former Navy test pilot, might push for flight sims, reconnecting with his roots, while Sunita's competitive spirit drives her forward. Week six, the final stretch, is about evaluation and transition. NASA wants to confirm they're ready for normal life and gather every scrap of data for the human research program. Fitness tests measure strength, endurance, and balance against their pre-flight baselines. How close are they to June 2024 levels? Final MRIs and X-rays assess bone and muscle gains, while detailed debriefs capture their experiences. How did your legs feel week one? Any lingering dizziness? After 45 days, they'll likely hit 80 to 90% of their pre-flight strength. Full bone recovery might take six months to a year. Then it's a gradual shift. Back to family life, light duties, no heavy lifting yet, and outpatient checkups for lingering effects. This isn't goodbye to NASA. It's a handover to long-term monitoring. Sunita and Butch face unique challenges. Their 286 days ranks among NASA's longest missions. Think Scott Kelly's 340-day stint intensifying rehab needs. At 59 and 62, they're older than the average astronaut, which might slow recovery but offers rare data on aging in space. Sunita's nine spacewalks, 62 hours total, and Butch's EVA contributions mean extra upper body focus. Emotionally, their unexpected delay, stranded by Starliner's woes, adds a layer, tackled through support, Sunita's grit and Butch's discipline shine here, but it's a marathon, not a sprint. This rehab isn't just personal, it's geopolitical and scientific. SpaceX stepping in where Boeing faltered underscores U.S. commercial space rivalries shaping NASA's future partnerships. Their recovery data feeds Artemis and Mars plans. Imagine crews on a three-year mission with no quick return. From orbiting Earth 4,576 times to relearning to walk, their resilience is a human triumph and a stepping stone for exploration. So, what's the takeaway? Over 45 days, Sunita and Butch will rebuild step by step muscles, bones, balance, and spirit under NASA's meticulous care. It's a testament to human adaptability and a blueprint for the stars. Could you handle nine months in space?
Drop your thoughts below. I'd love to hear them. If you enjoyed this deep dive, hit subscribe and tap the bell. We'll keep tracking their recovery and the wild world of space. Until next time, keep looking up.